Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now it's time to take stories that are happening in Nigeria, making headlines in Nigeria and across the globe. Joining us to review the papers is Jide Jensen. He's a chief lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, but he's joining us here from Lagos State. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right, so um, we're starting with the business NG, and the major headline here says NLC TUC to embark on a nationwide strike. And even on The Guardian as well, it says labor intensifies pressure, gives federal government 14 days to address hardship and hunger. I'd like to know your thoughts on this one. Well, um, how many times has labor given advance notice of going on strike? Mm. And how many times? particularly in the last eight years, and how many times have they been successful in, in carrying out the strike? Uh, as far as I am concerned, I've, I'm always of this firm belief that strike does not, does not really solve problem because at the end of the day, you go and strike, you cripple the economy, you render the private sector um, useless. And don't forget that it's only a few percentage of the Nigerian population that are working in public in public service, the bulk of Nigerians are working in the private sector, and particularly most Nigerians are self-employed. They operate mm -hmm. within the small and medium-scale enterprise. So when they strike, um, the government officials, those working in public service, at, at the end of the day, we get paid their salaries. However, those that are operating their small, medium-scale enterprise, what form of palliative do they get from government? with respect to the losses they are going to encounter um, during, during, this, during this strike. And I think that um, the era of strike, using strike to solve, um, to, 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 to address social, political, and economic issues nationally should, should be looked into and another strategy should, should be designed. So what other strategy rallies? can you uh, could, advise? For example, could, for example could, we, could, we have, could we have rallies? Could we occupy government offices and ensure that where well, government offices does not function, whereas people can go about their normal businesses and run their own private um, private enterprise? Um, could, could we have that? Could we have a situation whereby we render Asurok, um, incapacitate Asurok by requiring all the public servants that are working there not to go to work, the governor's offices across the length and breadth of the nation, um, the Secretariat across the land and bread of nation in terms, in terms of sit sit down and not work. That's my my ideas might look well um, not 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 effective or not appealing to my but I've seen over time in my little years on earth that um, what do we achieve at the end of strikes strikes that have been embarked upon by various labor leaders since. I became knowledgeable about mm -hmm. about 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 Nigerian Labour Congress and and its consequent uh, um, effect on shaping government policies and government 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 programs. At the end of the day, when people have jeered up for the strike, you see the labour also calling off those strikes. Mm. Okay, so I mean, you you spoke about rallies instead of strikes, right? Um, but then my question now is, there were some people, because rallies might you know, seem like a protest, and there were some people who went into the streets of Mina protesting against the hardship and hunger, and then they got arrested. And when we're talking about strikes, I, I remember when I was much younger, Adam Subshomole was like, you know, the the leader of the NLCs at that time. And when you just even have a whiff that the NLC is going on strike, the federal government is already coming into you know, the, nego the negotiation room and trying to see what can happen so we don't go on strike. But these days, the federal government even folds their hands like, yes, you, you say you're going on strike. Well, we know that you might not go on strike. So is it that the NLC has been watered down? And then two, if we start to do these rallies, what if people get arrested and then they turn into a world, uh, 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 a worldwide, okay, well, not worldwide, but it turn into a protest that we might not be able to contain? You've seen that those that were in the forefront of strike during the PDP administration, the strike was a bit recurrent. Um, uh, are now in government, 
they say that 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 man there a partisanship of the is getting involved in strike. So during the during the during the during the Oshomale era, as happy and there, and then when Oshomale became governor, when the tide changed, how tolerant was he of strikes in a just how tolerant was he against public protest or any form of dissent expressed by people in response to their dissatisfaction of his policy? So, as far as I'm concerned, the politicization of labor. Their involvement. Okay, look at what happened with the NSC president, the current NSC president, when he um, was trying to get involved in the politics of Imo State. You knew what happened with respect to that. How do I do not approve of him being being battered and brutalized by security agents because it's an insult on the fundamental human rights of any citizen. You have the right to protest, you have the right to express your opinion, you have the right to to express your public dissent petition, your government, and the rest of it. However, you just see that it's more or less like, okay, even their emergence, it's just ordinary union. Let me talk about the industry which I belong to. Let's talk about the unions, the various union and professional bodies that you have in the media industry. Can you become, um, can you become the, pres the, the president of Nigerian Guild of Editors? Or you become the national president of Nigerian Union you know, of Journalists, or other bodies in, in in this industry without having anyone of political patronage or the other. So, what the political class have done is to infiltrate all labor congress and ensure that they have control and they have their own person in there. And I tell you, okay, let me even talk about an industry which, um, a, a, a sector which I'm very very much involved. Let's talk about academic institution. Now. How many SUG president? I'm talking about the the union president of 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 universities across the student union government of universities across the land and breadth of Nigeria. How many of the presidents are independently elected without any interference by the BC or the governing council of institution playing play, play a critical role in determining who, who becomes the SUG president of of and that's why you have seen that. In the in the in the in the history of Nigerian uh, protest, in the easy of in the history of anti-government movement, populist movement against government, it has weakened over the years because strategically and tactically, student union student unionism has been destroyed. Has been destroyed because you now have puppets and apologists of those in 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 in, in, in authority running the student the student. The student union union government. How many student union you know, government have you seen that has emerged in the last in the last in the last twenty years? Like you have with your or like you have <coughs> like, like you have that well, what your race is doing amongst amongst other things. So everybody has become materialistic in their thinking. Everybody has become a bourgeoisie and not fighting for the interest of the workers. And all you just need to do is to take a trip and look at the type of cars the NSC presidents. And the various NSC state chairmen are driving, or look at the type of houses they are living, or look at the types of uh, of clothes or shoes they are wearing. So, they, 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 or you look at the union of various organizations, union of various corporate organizations, established established organizations, and look at their union leaders. Or let's talk about a key arm of <clears throat> protest and rally in Nigeria. The National Union of Road Transport Workers just take a trip and see their leaders. And how many people that are comfortable who want to fight for the rights of others? They would rather be interested in maintaining the status quo. And they, 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 all just they do is just to back a little. And once they back a little, and some things were thrown, some some turkeys and them roasted turkey and them roast fried chicken are thrown at them. Then they stop backing and then they, they, they come and tell you, you know, we are suspending the strike. Uh, we we'll start negotiating with the government. And at the end of the day, there's no form of negotiation. But the other, I'm not seeing strikes solving this problem. What I'm seeing that is imagine and which is 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 going to be a national a national rally, a national a national protest with respect to uh, when people are dissatisfied 
government policy. It's it is organic. It, it is it is not it is not um, it is not be planned or organized by the Nigerian Labour Congress. Just check movement globally. It has nothing to do with. I've asked people, where have you seen workers protest that have solved problems globally? If you have one example, just give it to me, and then I'll, I'll change my line of thought with respect to my 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 non-support for 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 strike and the rest of it. Okay, uh, let's move to another issue. The um, former governor of Lagos State, who was a minister uh, in the last administration, Fashola, wants constitution review to allow states determine minimum wage. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't know how these people, how they sleep, and how uh, and how they think. Uh, whether they talk before they think or they think before they talk, uh, because you have people that have been given responsibility that has inf that that have influence over shaping government policies, programs, and plan. And for example, this is a man that has been in gov that had been in government for quarter of a century. He was was chief of staff for eight years for seven plus years seven years to be precise after after being chief of staff then he became governor for two terms as he was finishing his um, governorship tenure he became minister minister for the first time in the history of nigeria he was assigned three ministry and under the first term of Buhari and the second term he was he was he was he was assigned to ministry works and housing and i want to ask him the question how many houses did he build for example how many house how many housing projects did he complete with his eight year tenure as 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 as, as the minister of housing how many how many how many did he build in for example in lagos let me let me particular with lagos in suffering in, in addressing the housing deficit which we have um, what policy did he put in place? He, he he tried to do the monthly, for example, the monthly rental water bill when he was governor. But what what teeth did they give to the execution? All these people are just all thugs, and because they've had an opportunity, there is this intellectual arrogance and this feeling of that they know uh, they have the quick fix to solving the problem. But when they when 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 they had the opportunity to to, to shape government policies and the rest of what did they do with it? And that's that's just my take that's my view and i'm entitled to it if anybody disagrees with it that is okay own point of view too so as far as i'm concerned i don't listen to them because i count them to be relevant because when they had a problem they didn't do anything they didn't they didn't do anything why is he looking for limelight in, in talking about issues which he has control over and is not able to do anything with respect to it while he had that authority Okay, still on the Guardian newspaper, we have this headline saying that the refs uh, tighten defamation car, uh, laws uh, meet Bajabia Miller's three billion COVID-19 fund allegation. It's been an issue. Uh, people accusing him that he had misappropriated the funds and all that. So, uh, refs are now tightening defamation laws amid uh, this uh, issue of uh, COVID-19 funds. What do you think? Well, if you look at the with respect to disbursement of COVID-19 fund, whether in Nigeria or in Great Britain, <coughs> or in United States of America, across governments all over the world. Um, there have been a series of um, allegations, <coughs> and counter allegations with respect to the management of that, of that, of that fund. And talking presently, you know that um, the issue of the management of that fund or mismanagement of that fund, code on code, is also responsible for why the minister <clears throat> the current <clears throat> minister for 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 humanitarian affairs is under suspension. Um, we seems not to be hearing anything with respect to the investigation into that particular matter. There's no way the speaker will not be involved. Don't forget that Baja has also has always been involved in government since 2003 that he became as a rep member. He's been minority leader, he's been majority leader, and he's been speaker. So for the past for the past for the past. Now he's chief of staff. So let me talk conveniently that for the past 13 years, Baja has been in the corridor of powers at the national level, shaping and influencing government, government, government policy. So there's no way that anything, and don't also forget that the power of the post belongs to the, to the legislature. It's the legislature that have the right to debate and, 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 and legalize whatever appropriation bill that is put before, before it. So, uh, there's no way that um, 
one way or the other, he must not have deepened his hand in the cookie jar, allegedly. And then if you also look at um, some of the things, some of the projects that he commissioned recently, which invariably it was, it was, it was, it was more or less reported, um, like it is his personal money that he used to do national projects, and then you begin to wonder how, 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 how we're able to separate our private life from our public life and what should be public funds and what should be our private funds in running projects. So let them tighten it. If they try to make the law um, because of one person, it will help the system invariably because it will come back to defamation. I'm totally against black bill. I'm totally against defamation. I've always said it when I teach my students. I said it's only a thin line that separates um, your exclusive investigative stories about 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 an individual from defamation. So you must be able to to to, to separate to, to 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 separate the two. You must be able to to separate your being objective or being balanced in your reporting from being blackmailing. Um, 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 a public official or disparaging a public official from his management of all. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm totally disparaging of public officials. I'm totally against you um, engaging in character assassination or trying to get bought. It's also important for the public, the right of the public to know what is really what is really happening. There is always an attempt by those in authority. I was having a discussion with my wife yesterday yesterday night and then we are talking about the evolution of the media and how those in authority have always made an attempt to control there were when newspaper emerged there were attempt to control newspaper through licensing fee the same thing with when tv radio emerged an attempt to control um tv by the by the allocation of the frequency and the bandwidth which they operate so it's the same thing that they are trying to do with social media now that okay you know what we are going to have control so those are in authority don't want the public to know what is happening and the, those that are operating in the media wants they want to they have the they, they have the, the intention and the right to know what those that they have given authority to are doing so as far as i'm concerned let the ultimate power the, belongs to the people sovereignty belongs to the people unfortunately for those in authority social media has like has liberalized that it has given absolute power to those to the people this is the power that belongs to the ultimate power that belongs to the people and um, it's a god-given right the right of expression and the right uh, 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 and the right to self-determination and the right to to, to, to to express your thought your views concerning issue within the confines of the law um, not disparaging on trampling on the rights of other people so it's it's nothing new uh, but i've seen over the years and over time that every attempt by government to control the media the means of public expression has always failed and this will fail is the one thing they don't understand is that those that have made an attempt to 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 to, to control the media they've, 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 they've looked at this control from the prison of personalization personalization of the institution of the state either when it was monarchical monarch government or whether it went when it was an authoritarian government whichever government you practice uh, whichever authority you are trying to represent that you are personalized in order to control over the the exchange the free flow of uh, exchange of ideas and information that person or that individual has a time span whether it's a queen or is a king or is an emperor they will eventually die and when they, that's that's reality their time will lapse so the time of those that are in government now it will lapse mm. all right let's move over to another story um this one still on the guardian says government orders release of 102,000 metric tons of rice and maize um however there's still um, another small story here that says women farmers deny receiving 15 trillion naira agri intervention so um, the government is already saying they're, they're about to release 102,000 metric tons you know, of rice and maize to people. And I think there was Gary and some other things as well. Mm -hmm. And we asked the question, how is this going to be delivered to people? Are they going to sell it for maybe a subsidized, a subsidized rate? Or are they going to give it out as palliatives? How are we sure that we're even going to get this or benefit from this? And is this even um, the way to go? Because we're talking about hardship and sufferings of the people so is it giving us rice and gary that is supposed to alleviate our sufferings and then you're seeing women farmers talking about de they're really denying that they received 15 trillion naira um agri intervention so is this just a sham is this something that they come and they say but they never execute well there's one thing for you to make policy statement and there's the other angle of execution 
the question I want to ask is that uh, this will be the second time in, in recent time that the president will order the release of grains from the strategic reserve. So if you have this much greed in the strategic reserve, why have you not released it in order to force down the prices of of, of goods and of mm -hmm. goods uh, in the country of commodity of commodity produce in the country? Why why have they not done that? And so why do you have to keep something in the reserve when people are actually going hungry? I recall that the president or that when the first came in, I think about about some few months into this administration, the president ordered the release of strategic green and the president is ordering the release of the strategic green again the question i want to ask is now why was 100 million allocated to each of the house of rep representative for them as palliative for them to buy greens and share within their constituents uh, within their constituency when we have this strategic green in reserve why do we have to go to ministry of agri um, um to purchase all of this items rice beans gari and the rest of it to be distributed as palliative in order to cushion the effect of the removal of <coughs> all subsidy and then the unified exchange rate so sometimes when these people talk uh, they think that um uh, we we are not intelligent we are just fools and then they can just drop anything in the public space and we we'll take it decline and sink up without having a mind of our own and it makes me to remember one of the songs of fella he said when you hear after you hear these people duck if you like you cuckoo jeje if you don't like you cuckoo jeje so it's what he's saying in effect is that if, if after you hear these people talk if you like you believe it if you like don't believe it they don't even really care about about, about 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 your thought or your feelings to what they have said they just drop whatever they want to drop in the public domain and allow you to debate over it my my uh, if you have this 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 and i want people to to show me the images of the release of the previous greens that the president ordered in the first under within the first three or four months of his administration that is now ordering the release of one again we don't have grains to eat and then there are grains in the strategic reserve and then talking to about the issue of whether they have access to the funds which were meant for farmers we have always said that there's no way in the world that you do you do you do cash transfer you do one form of palliative or intervention of government you you discover that the money that is spent on the logistics for the management of this fund is even much more than the money that is actually released and the beneficiaries of of these funds are actually look all you need to understand is very simple that there's conflict of interest which quote unquote public official in nigeria does not have a farm how many of them how many of the staff working in the ministry of agri either at the state level or the federal level does not have a farm mm -hmm what is usually the retirement plan of generals in the nigerian military structure so when you when 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 beneficiaries of the when executor of government policies are beneficiaries of such policies there's conflict of interest you don't actually get to the people that you want it actually to, to to get to like i was like i appeared on one program and we are talking about this 100 million or 100 million that the president quote unquote graciously and that's how some of the house of rep members graciously uh, allocated to each of the house of rep members and i can't recall the amount of money that was given to each of the senate and i said why do you have to centralize this money why for example, the one for my federal constituency, why not allow the local traders in my federal constituency to supply the beans, to supply the rice, to supply all what is required, and not for it to be done, for it to be done by the Ministry of Agri centrally for the for the 360 years of rep members in the process you have not allowed the evolution in the process you have not allowed the money to flow down to the local areas where the people look the locals themselves can feel the, the the benefit of being of being citizen and participate in the economic process in when it's when it's time to vote the 
ballot boxes and ballot paper we quickly get to the nooks and crannies of nigeria we even get to the river area we get to the most unaccessible parts of this country within hours but when it's time to share the socio-economic benefits it becomes pretty difficult mm. that's a food for thought <laughs> <coughs> Oh, well, uh, it's, it's really a food for thought. We do hope that um, um, the government will be fast about it and they will be more transparent about whatever they're doing because we need to see results because uh, uh, protests here and there mm -hmm. might merge one day and it will become something that we cannot contain. But uh, this is a good place to leave this uh, this morning. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Jide Johnson, for coming on the program as always. It's a pleasure having had you on the program. Thank you for having me, and I want to wish the super ego success on Sunday after the first yeah. day. Yeah. My time yeah. will come next week. We'll be celebrating. If there's one thing that brings Nigerian together, you understand that there's a Nigerian spirit. Yeah. We all love ourselves. We love our country. We don't yeah. care about our tribe, religion, race, yeah. or creed. When Nigeria plays, every Nigerian roots for Nigeria. Yeah. They don't care if 11 of the players are from one section of the country or one or, or one on one family. As far as they are Nigerian, putting on the Nigerian spirit, Nigerian jersey, putting on the Nigerian flag. We all root for them. Yeah. And that's the spirit that should guide our, our, our nation. And that's the spirit we should use moving, moving forward. But for political reasons, they always find one way or the other to divide us. But united, we stand. Divided, yes. we fall. Once we put that spirit together, I can assure you, this country will achieve the greatness which is destined for. So yeah. we wish them success. Yes, so thank All you right. very much for having us. Thank you, thank you thank very you much. So much. We we'll use this time also to say um, those who lost their lives because of the tension watching the mm. uh, the match between Nigeria and South Africa, whatever the problem was, but they died on that day that Nigerians were celebrating. While watching the game, we 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 pray that their souls may rest in peace. Right, we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. So please stay with us.